This week on Crossfeed. What do you think about ink? Jesus washing Osama's feet. Circle collars, should they paint bullseyes on them? Prison, fire, and religious freedom. And Ramadan celebrations in public school. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Crossy Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley. I can't even say my name. Pastor Dale Critchley, Pastor St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. I'm Pastor Jim Butler in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts, and welcome, everybody, to this week's edition of Crossfeed News. Hello, everybody. You may dispense with the pleasantries tonight. Well, if Dale's not feeling good, and I'm, I'm tired. It's been a long week. So, uh... I think it's hay fever, because um, the guinea pigs eat hay, and it was, I was changing their cage last night, and my nose didn't bother me ever since. Mm. I'm not well. So, but what are you going to do? Don't answer that, because I know what your answer is, <laughs> and I don't want PETA coming after us. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I just remember an old Saturday Night Live skit from the 70s going through my mind right now. So, um, we, but we won't, we won't go there. It won't make Tita happy. So, um, although, let me, let, let, let's go ahead and get started tonight instead of chit chat because I'm tired and, uh, do need yep. to start things. Well, instead of changing the gerbils, no, the, ha- yeah, the gerbils, um, Guinea pig. guinea pig, gerbils, guinea pigs, hamsters, they're all rodents. Uh, instead of changing the, the guinea pig's hay, could you have washed the guinea pig's feet? Would Jesus have washed the <laughs> guinea pig's feet? <laughs> wow. It's like bowling for, um, for segues. <laughs> I have no idea what that meant. Oh, uh, we have. Uh, it's The group is called the Good News Tour. And uh, they put up some posters in uh, malls and, and places like that and in uh, in Oregon and the posters depict Jesus washing uh, various people's feet and uh, I recognize some of them but not all of them um, the, probably the most notable people in the picture are President Bush and Osama bin Laden uh, Nelson and Mandela Oh, yeah, okay. Who are the other ones? I'm not quite sure who they are. That one looks kind of like, um, um, what's the name of the leader of the North, of North Korea? Dear Leader, Ka Kim Jong Il. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, looks kind of like him. I'm not sure if it is or not. It's a painting. But, um, it's Jesus is washing these people's feet. And now the idea behind it is that um, Jesus loves everyone, no matter who you are, friend or foe. And this image, the idea is that um, when Jesus washed the disciples' feet, Judas was there along with all the rest, and he washed Judas' feet along with everybody else's. And so they're saying, you know, they're not saying, all right, this is Judas, this person or that person because I'm sure everybody has their opinions about which ones are represent Judas. Um, but people are not real happy with this idea that of a, a poster uh, with Jesus washing the feet of some uh, rather controversial people. See, now, I thought it was really cool. I, I mean, it says, Do we know the God who would wash the feet of his friends and his enemies? And I think this is a really neat way of highlighting that Jesus loves everyone in the world. You don't, and not just those that we might agree with. I think it's a really neat uh, uh, picture myself. I don't know if I hang it up in my church, but I really like the thought. Them all. You know, I, I really like I really like the thought myself. I thought it was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there was an interesting uh, quote. They said, uh, people opposed to this picture feel that God isn't that kind. We believe that he is. And uh, and I agree. I mean, I, they don't really go 
they don't have any quotes from people that are against it, which I think would have been helpful to sort of get that mm-hmm. side. Um, they just have quotes from the people that are that put the posters up there and that are part of this um, this organization. And uh, so the it's it's basically a convention to discuss the nature of of God and um, Christology and things like that. So I mean, yeah, I I think it. You know, I, I saw the poster and I, I love it. I, I think it's great. I, I like that it says the, the the meaning is that in the painting is that of powerful world leaders and one powerful terrorist, the one with all the power is ultimately Jesus, and Jesus yeah. using that power then to serve those with whom he uh, disagree, or maybe shower his blessings upon, or maybe both. Yeah. So no, I I think this is great, and, and quite frankly, I think it's a um, it's a great uh, teaching opportunity to say, yeah, this is reality. Jesus, you know, Jesus did wash Judas's feet. Why? Because even though he knew that Judas would betray him, he still loved Judas, mm-hmm. and he and even in spite of that, and and to you know sort of take that concept, he serves us too. Even though we've been rebellious, even though we've turned against him, even though we've betrayed him, he still loves us. Yeah, I think part of this is recognizing that, you know, you look at the at the list of, of people there, and, all right, which one of those people are you better than? Which one of those people are you more deserving of God's love than? Hmm. And a lot of people would say, well, definitely Osama bin Laden. You know, I haven't killed thousands of people. But, you know. How many times have you sinned against God? Uh, right. I mean, it's, it, it really brings home, I think, the idea of uh, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but God has grace on all people, regardless yeah. of who they are, and regardless of what they've done. Right. And, uh, so, yeah, I'd like to have gotten some of the read, read some of the complaints about it. I think that would have helped it out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, because it, it really, the story really seems one-sided. But don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. But, no, I, I thought it was interesting. I, I'd like to see posters like that hanging up in our local malls. I think it'd be so. cool. But would you like it to be a tattoo across your chest? Uh, I'm not quite so sure about that one. Um, This is, I don't know if this is so much a... A news like something new, an actual event, but um, it's definitely a trend. Um, our listeners and viewers, how many of you have tattoos? And what's it a picture of? And so, basically, the idea here is tattoos are growing in popularity. Uh, almost half of all Americans under 30 have one. 40% of adults 26 to 40 have a tattoo. And don't get technical with me. A quarter of Americans say tattoos make them feel more rebellious. A fifth say they feel more spiritual. Uh? So I don't know if a tattoo would make me feel spiritual. I have no idea what that meant. Okay, of course yours. Somehow I don't think I'll be welcome at the country club. Teresa won't let me get one. So. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're younger than me. I mean, you know, I... I'm at that stage of, you know, it, it would probably look cool on you, you know? Like, I see these, you know, young 20-somethings with them, and yeah, they look cool. I mean, my daughter has one. Um, but I, I'm i sorry. Okay, I want to, I told one of them, you know, that looks great. I want to live to be 110. I go, why? Because I'm going to see you at age 90 with that tattoo. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> over time, they, there's a lot of, there's a if, if you're going to get one, you need to make, you know, not um, be kind of rash about the decision because, you know, for one, they fade. They kind of look washed out after a while, and, and they tend to look pretty lousy. But, um, you know, I mean, I think if you're going to go with one, black and white's the way to go. <laughs> um, but, but that yeah, you know, I, some people, though, they, they talked about, talked about how they use it to witness. Uh, one guy has yep. a couple crosses tattooed. Uh, yeah. Another guy says that the, he makes him more accountable because no matter what he does, he's always reminded of his faith. 
Yeah, and it's it's accountability in the sense that you can't hide it. If it you know if it's there, people know you're a Christian, and uh, you need you know then at that point uh, you better act like one because it's a reminder that everything that you do is a witness to who Christ is, right. and uh, which I mean which is a great reminder. So what I would say those little fish emblems um, on cars that uh, you should stick it on your dashboard instead to remind you who you are and to drive accordingly. Oh, very nice plane! I have seen some interesting Christians drive up here in Boston, but then everybody drives that way in Boston, so... Now, <laughs> my, now, uh, I, I mean, my, now my brother, my, my, my little brother, he's 41, 42 now. Uh, he just turned 42. Uh, or will be turning 42 this year. He's got a really cool tattoo on his arm. Okay? It's, I don't care if there's a cross on it or not, but there's a heart circled by a crown of thorns, and dripping from the heart is blood going down to a chalice. Cool. So. Good on you, mate! Oh, I like that. Yeah, see, if I was going to get one, I'd get someone. Actually, if I was going to get one, what I'd probably get is a, um, is a cross right over my heart. That would hurt. Yeah, it would. So <laughs> that's another reason not to get one. I have a uh, member of my church, and uh, he was going to get one for his 21st birthday. And he, uh, so he went to the tattoo parlor a couple weeks before that, and he saw the instruments, and he said, those stuff looks like that would hurt. <laughs> so I decided to get one. <laughs> But, no, if I was going to get one, I would get it right up here on my arm. It would be a Superman S. <laughs> so, um, you know, Jim would feel more spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> Much more spiritual. <laughs> so, but I'm never right, going to do it, the, so, you know, that's, that's yeah. all there is to it. Um, Here's the controversy, all right? Leviticus 19.28. You shall not make any tattoo marks on yourselves. Ah, forbidden in Scripture. Dark side. Except, you know, this is, we're talking Old Testament, and this falls under that category of having tassels hanging on your uh, garments, on the four corners of your garment, too. And no um, ham sandwiches. And yep. no cheeseburgers. And no shellfish. That's right. God doesn't like lobster or shrimp. <laughs> Which is really, you know, we wouldn't be real good up here in Massachusetts. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know, depending on how much lobster's made up here. I mean, it's, again, you know, it's nothing against the moral law. There is nothing immoral about it. Uh, one guy even said something, though, you know, it's, well, it's, it's in the Bible, and, uh, that, that, you know, and, and we, we shouldn't allow it then because of that. Uh, yeah. Uh, Presbyterian Pastor Joe Mullen says we can't ignore Leviticus. Uh, I think we need to ask ourselves whether we're trying to create a special identity that marks us, and really, in Jesus, we have our special identity. Actually, he's absolutely right. In Christ mm -hmm. is our special identity. That's what baptism's all about. God makes us his own. God, uh, I, you know, Texans out there would appreciate me putting it this way. God marks us with his brand, you know, and then, yeah. you know, and then we are his. He's absolutely right. But that's not a conflict with um, putting a tattoo. Matter of fact, if right. the tattoo identity is, is, is a cross or something like that, it really does identify us as being God's people. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And, you know, and for that matter, if you're going to get a tattoo, it you know, it could be a Superman emblem or whatever. It doesn't have to be a, a religious thing because, you know, we're free to, um, as long as we're not leading someone into sin, we're free to pretty much dress however we want. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so that's just, you know, whether you make that a, it's, it's like the, that um, permanent makeup uh, where they basically like tattoo makeup onto uh, especially women's faces so you get the um, eyeshadow and lipstick and stuff it's all sort of subdermal so that they never have to put on makeup they just always look like they're wearing it I've never heard about that yeah good thing my younger daughter hasn't heard of it she'd want it <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, 
the problem is, you know, you change what you're wearing, and all of a sudden your eyeshadow doesn't match. <laughs> and so. you would know about that because? <laughs> Sorry about this. I know it's a bit silly. Uh, we'll just remind everyone that Jim's the one living in Massachusetts, <laughs> not me. Well, now, there, there is the one county there in Iowa, you know, so it's, it's just not... <laughs> True. And hey, Iowa boy. is not Iran, so, you know, it's, uh, you know... Yes. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, we're not going to go there. That's not one of our stories <laughs> this week. But anyway, right. you know... Uh, uh, and, I, you know, I, I don't know, it... it, it uh, you know, what remains is an issue, according to the article, is whether a practice has offensive pagan roots is one that should be encouraged. I, again, I don't know if I would encourage anybody to get a tattoo. But what I say, go out and do it. Like I said, I mean, yeah, it might look good on you young, but man, you're going to get old these days, and then it's going to look bad on you. Um, and of course, a lot of people um, uh, get a little older, and they say, you know, why did I do that? And then they have this very painful uh, process of removing it. Right. Uh, which is which is not easy at all. But I, I don't think I'd ever uh, encourage anybody. But I don't think there's any reason to say no. You can't. I don't think there's. I don't think it's unchristian to do so. Right. Yeah. And it's kind of neat. Actually, yes. one guy said, uh, you know, they got some tattoos of the Holy Spirit because they really, uh, you know, God changed their lives so dramatically, and they wanted to really show that. You know, another one that would that would be a, a good tattoo would be a um just like a, a shell, like a shell with three drops of water, and um you know Martin Luther said when you wash your face in the morning remember your baptism. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just a reminder that you're that God has marked you as a baptized child of God. Batman shield would be cool too. To and, uh, oh, what's that? Batman shield would be really cool too. <laughs> Trying to be spiritual here, Jim. <laughs> you know, I see. Luther's Rose, okay? Luther's Rose would be pretty cool. Yeah? yeah. Well, Alright, speaking marked. of being marked, um, there is a suggestion in England that clergy should remove their, I've never heard this expression before, their dog collar <laughs> <laughs> when they're off duty. Well, I wonder, if this is, I wonder if this is because this is an Indian, I think. Because it said, Ishida Sukhohadwala is the author. Uh, A-H-N. I don't know what A-H-N stands for. Uh, all headline news. Well, I don't know where yeah, it's yeah. from. but it's. So I was wondering if it might be. Yeah, I, I like that term too. Yeah, that they're dog collars. I thought that was, that was, that was cute. Um, Must be a British thing. Um, but the idea here is that they want to reduce the risk of being attacked. Apparently in um, Britain, if you're wearing this clerical collar, um, then you have, you're more likely to get attacked. Yeah, it said uh, that which, uh, between 1997 and 1999, 70 percent of clergy faced some form of violence and more than 10% of clergy reported being assaulted. In the past decade, five clergy members of England have been murdered. Well, that's one every other year, so I'm not sure that's all. Yeah, how did, I mean, is it because they're wearing those collars? Well, I, I don't know. It said, you know, it says, um, uh, clergy are easy target, number one, since they are thought to have money. You know, we get paid so much money <laughs> for this job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's, that, that one cracked me up. <laughs> that's that's Oral Roberts, uh, Joel Osteen, you know those guys. You know that's, that's Rick Warren, Bill Hybels. They're the ones that have the money, not 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 the run of the mill guys. Um, they're also most likely to be targeted by someone with a grievance against God. Well, that I can understand. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so as 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 those who who speak on God's behalf. You know, we're kind of easy targets. And, you know, that happens to, 
you know, most pastors will experience that at least some point in their career um, where someone is, is upset with God, and so they lash out at their pastor. Um, and it's nothing personal against the pastor. Basically, a lot of times, what it, it's, it's actually, um, I had one time I had a situation kind of like that, and the, um, one of the kids of the person who was just really making my life difficult, um, he came to me and, and said, you know what, just whenever he does that to you, just take it with a grain of salt and recognize it as actually respect because you're safe. He's really frustrated, and he just he, this frustration is building up inside of him, and he knows that if he does it to you, you'll forgive him. And so, you know, at that point, he's 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 doing that to you just because he's got to do it to somebody, and he knows that it's okay if he does it to you. So, and actually, after the thing that was causing him all that stress um, came to an end. Everything, he just, he was a totally different person. And he was, that all came to an end. So, you know, and I don't wear my collar from day to day, but he knew who I was, you know, he knew I was his pastor. And so. Me, you don't wear it when you take a shower? No, 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 no. You have me confused with the Mormons and their magic underwear. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought maybe you'd have the collar tattooed around your neck, you know. <laughs> there you go. Boy, no control. No, nope, my neck's already nice and white. <laughs> so, you know, I just thought, you know, you just have a tattoo there, you know. I know a couple guys... Think... those hats? No. You get those black hats, oh, they have a little white square right there. Yeah, yeah. I know a few guys, I think they do, you know, wear it in the shower, kind of. I have little jammies there with the little, you know, collar there. I think so, babe. You know a couple of those, too, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Yeah. No, um, this kind of... Oh, we're so bad although, tonight. We are being bad. <laughs> wait, but, you know, no, this, this actually reminds me of a really great story. I've probably shared this on the show before, but it's, it, I think it's been a while, so, uh, for our... our New listeners are those that, if you, if you remember this one, just zip ahead a little bit, but it's a funny story. Um, I was at seminary down in St. Louis, and um, our my fieldwork church, which is where you do kind of practice um, uh, preaching and teaching and things like that, um, was about 40 miles away from where we were living. And, uh, and there was a Walmart like two blocks away from there. And so uh, we would, after church a lot of times, we would, go and do our shopping because it was also pretty much the closest Walmart to where we lived even though it was that far away. So it was, it was just kind of convenient if we needed to go do any shopping we would, we would just stop over there and do that. And um, so here I'm, it was uh, I'm, I'm walking with my wife. She's pregnant with our first daughter. Okay. She also, because of the, the pregnancy, her fingers had swollen up so she wasn't wearing her wedding ring. And here we're walking through the parking lot, holding hands, and someone comes up, and I'm still wearing my collar. <laughs> so I'm walking with this pregnant woman, holding hands with her, and she's not wearing a wedding ring. <laughs> and this, we were walking towards the store. There's this woman coming out of the store, and she looks, and she sees this, you know, she sees us walking, and she gets this look on her face. <gasps> oh. And she was just horrified. <laughs> and your wife turned around and looked at you and said, I love you, Father. <laughs> and if she didn't, she should have. Oh, it was just, it was hilarious. I just, hi, you know, <laughs> she's kept walking. But, oh, man, I, I will never forget that. It was so funny. Um, so, you know, that's, that's my, no, I have heard of pastors that talk about um, not being comfortable wearing their collars in public because of all of the priest scandals. And that they feel like people are, they see them wearing the collar, especially the ones that wear the tab collar as opposed to the, um, as they put it in here, the dog collar, the wraparound one. And, um, and they feel like when they're out in public wearing this collar, people see them, think it's a Roman Catholic priest, and just automatically assume they're a child molester. And, um, I mean, 
that's sad on several accounts. First of all, they're not even Roman Catholic. And second of all, there's plenty of Roman Catholic priests out there that are not child molesters. You can't just automatically assume. So, you know, but, I mean, it's just people see that. They just, it's sort of like seeing someone from the Middle East and automatically assuming they're a terrorist. You know, it's the same kind of thing. It's, it really, it's, it's a form, well, it's not racism, but it's, you know, prejudice. it's that kind of prejudice. There you go, that's the word. So, it's it's stereotyping because you got the collar on, therefore you're a bad guy. I mean, now up here, I go out and call, everybody calls me father. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't know how common it is for you because I mean, there's more Protestants than Lutherans, but up here, everybody's brother's Irish Catholic, just about. And I mean, it's just and so you go down and everybody calls you father. No, I get that. If if I'm out in public wearing my collar, I, I get called father, or yeah. or else. I'll be in a store or something like that, and I'll hear someone cuss, and they'll turn around and see me and go, Sorry, Father. <laughs> they wouldn't say, Sorry, Father, up here. <laughs> wouldn't bother them a bit. You know, but anyway, uh, but I get it all. But I can call that all the time. And, uh, you know, and, and I, but I, I still wind up being treated with quite a bit of respect up here. You know, I mean, even, even then, I mean, people will. Uh, I, I and I wear it basically for when I'm in the when I'm, when I'm visiting my people because people do find comfort in it, and I wear it when I'm out um, doing hospital calls and things like that because I go in and they know exactly why I'm there. They, they know who you know. They look up, see the uniform. Okay, you, you know your clergy. Well, how can I help? You? What can I do for you? Mm-hmm. You know, or as one friend of mine one time told me. You know, I had to go see somebody in ICU. He says, "Put on your collar and walk in like you own the place." You know, just, just because they won't, they'll, they'll let you in anywhere. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. No, I, I do visits almost every day, and um, you know, so I just, I don't like wearing it all the time, and I don't want to change a couple times a day. So, you know, I it's more of a. I don't know, maybe a personal comfort thing for me. Plus, the people around here aren't really used to it. I mean, um, the past couple of previous pastors, at least, did not wear the collar so it, on a daily basis. So it wouldn't, I mean, it's not what they're used to. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, you come in here, come in the, on my office, you'll see me, you'll see the tab pulled sticking in my pocket and the, the, the shirt unbuttoned. And one mm-hmm. person asked me why. What do you wear that thing? Anyway. Gets me away from wearing a tie. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I I wear my collar before I'd wear a tie. I don't want to wear ties. Sometimes I wear a tie. Sometimes I, I like being. I don't mind mind it. Actually, this last summer, because of my niece's wedding, and I forgot to get a tab for my shirt, uh, and I couldn't find one. I wound up buying a, a new clergy shirt with a wraparound collar. So it's the first time I've owned one of those. Oh, yeah. And um, my wife just bought me a long sleeve one to go with it. That's that's pinstripe. So, uh, different. It's no, have a very different look to it. Be, before we leave this story, I think it, it, it um, is helpful. You know, some people ask, well, "What's the, the significance of it?" All right. Um, so, historically, the black color represents our sin. That we're still sinners, just like everybody else. But the the Speak white for by the throat. <laughs> anyway, uh, the white by the throat. When a pastor speaks the word of God, even though he's a sinner, the word is pure. And pastors shouldn't be going around speaking their opinions, unless they're doing a religious news podcast. <laughs> and uh, so, which is actually why I don't wear a collar for um, recording this show, just to make it clear that a lot of what we're saying on here is personal opinion. And um, so, but when a pastor is speaking and uh, is preaching or you know, it's proclaiming the gospel to, a, a, you know, a shut-in or, or whatever like that, um, then what he's saying is the pure word of God and um, should not be judged based on the worthiness of the person, but rather on the worthiness of God's word. Uh, well, actually, I mean, I mean, if you go back to the medieval ages, the, the cassock was the, 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 the uniform of the clergy that they wore everywhere, and that just got... Mm-hmm. And that was black, and that just got turned into the, the shirt, the pants. I read a legend somewhere. 
um, that that the the idea of the, the collar uh, was goes back to the days of the detachable collars, you know, and you know, the, you know, they, they take the collar off, and that uh, under Cromwell in England, he he forced the priests to get rid of the cassock and get rid of their uniform, and just dressed like everybody else, uh, just like a lawyer or something. Because uh, he was, you know, did not like uh, anything that was Catholic, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, really pushed this Protestantism to the hilt. And so the priest in um, uh, concentrate, Pinky, concentrate. Uh, protest would wear the shirts like the businessmen, but they would put the collar on backwards. Hmm. I did not know that. Interesting. And that's or there's that. Um, uh, the the first episode of Mork and Mindy. <laughs> Do you remember that? He yes, I'm thinking his, just thinking of it actually. He, he's wearing a suit, but he's wearing it yeah, backwards. backwards yeah. Mindy sees him, thinks that it's a wraparound collar when actually he's just wearing the suit backwards. So, but yeah, that that I I don't know where I read that story though about that's the origin of the collar, and I don't even know if it's true or not. But I, I always thought it was. Like, Cool. Are you incapable of restraining yourself, mm. or do you take pride in being an insufferable know-it-all? Well, let's go to, um, now we've got a couple of re- kind of religious freedom stories here, or tolerance mm-hmm. stories. Um, let's go to the jail first. Okay. Because right. I think this is this pretty is in, easy. Yeah, this is in Montgomery, Alabama. Well, this is great. You know, you've got a lot of jail experience. Um, we have uh, Tony Lee Smith. Wanted to build a fire at St. Clair Correctional Facility to practice an ancient polytheistic Nordic religion called Odinism, according to this lawsuit. It's actually the name of the religion is Asatru. I might not be pronouncing it right, um, but yeah, it's it's a worship of you know Odin and Thor and um, Frey and all the the, the Norse gods. But he wants to be, he wanted to build a fire in a fire pit to do this. Mm-hmm. And they said no, and he sued, and it went up to the Eleventh Circuit Court of Appeals, and they said, "Heck no, uh, it's not violating your First Amendment rights to say this." Uh, so they gave him a candle. Yeah, they gave him a candle. Okay, hey, you need you a flame. We'll give you a candle. You know, I mean, keep it in mind that really this this religion is very focused on sort of warrior. Uh, really, I mean, one of their religious rites is uh, um. Is a uh, passing around the the cup, um, not like Holy Communion in Christianity. It's a uh, uh, when you you do this when you're boasting about something, and you're taking the boast inside of you that way. And, and I mean, it's a it basically it's a it's a religious drinking game. Kind of like so Klingon drinking their blood wine, huh? Anyway. Yeah, yeah, Klingons ah. are pretty at home. <laughs> I mean, it's a, I mean, there's every reason in the world. I mean, when, when you're dealing with jails, you got to ask questions about basic safety. Have you ever been in a, in a Turkish prison? I mean, that's yeah. what it comes down to. Uh, you got to, you, you, you got to keep the inmates safe. You got to keep the, everybody safe. That's, safety is the primary thing. Having a guy put a fire in a pit, we have a real problem here with safety. Yeah, and that's what it comes down to. It's just, it's just that simple. Uh, and the guy's darn lucky that he got the candle. You know, yeah. I would have given him a pen flashlight. <laughs> you know, you can get those LED candles. You see those? They flicker, and you can even blow them on and off. Uh-huh. There's a little, um, there's a little like audio sensor in there. So you just blow it. It flickers. It's an LED. So he's lucky he didn't get that. I would have given him that, though. You know, keep the yeah. flame away. Uh, so, now, one thing here, it, this religion, there's a lot of white supremacists um, in, that are part of Asatru. Um, not all. It's, it's about half and half, but there's a lot of contention within the religion about um, whether you should be or shouldn't be and all that kind of stuff. So they're a little bit concerned about that. I think that's, that's that's a fair thing to be. I didn't think the fire will 
overall. I mean, you just got to, you got to be safe in the jail. And if you haven't ever been in the jail before, especially if it's an overcrowded one, that, that safety issue, matter of fact, we had our, our, our last meeting and they told us uh, we can now have, uh, I can't remember what they called it. It's a little box. It's got a pin in it that uh, sits down. And if you feel you're in an unsafe situation with an inmate, you just pull that pin out, and all these lights start going on, this alarm starts going, and about a dozen good, uh, COs will run down there to your protection. Hmm. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, you know. And he said, you know, it's like if punk guy, none of us use it, but uh, one of the COs said, I don't know how you guys stand to be around the inmates without having that on. I said, I never. I wouldn't be in a room with 35 inmates and not have that kind of protection with me. Uh, so that is just a key thing. I mean, he, I mean, just assume for a moment that they gave the guy the fire pit. How how long before we have five guys in there? Mm-hmm. Or ten guys in there? Uh, and right. pushing, trying trying to shove each other into the fire. Right. Uh, or grabbing a stick and using that as a, a, a weapon against one of the other guys in there. I mean, I got in there the first day, and all the inmates have to sign in. And uh, they have these special pens that they use that are very, very flexible. I don't know how you write with them. Yeah. Because uh, I've tried, because, you know, they you can't use it as a weapon. Because it's just it as a shield. Yeah. You just, I, anyhow, I, uh, I had a regular pen, and the person uh-huh. said, don't even leave the pen cap. This that 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 can be a weapon. Yeah. You use it uh, like uh, like this or something to put a guy's eye out. You wouldn't even be, we wouldn't even begin to think that way. No. But uh, that's, well. that's 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 what it is. I mean, you just got to be just that super careful in a jail. Yeah, but they have these special jail pens. No pencils, just these pens, and I mean, they just, they, 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 you know, it's just total gift. You, you can put this through somebody's arm or something if, if you wanted to, because there's nothing there to hold on to with it. It just, that's, hmm. so. I, you know, that, it comes back to that whole safety issue. Oh, I am feeling woozy. All right, so speaking of uh, religious freedom and, and what's allowed and what's not allowed, uh, we have... A, it, it, this is uh, in Oglefun near Chicago, and uh, there's been an influx of Muslims into the area. And so now there's a debate about what holidays should the school celebrate. One third of the student population is now Muslim. So This all started by a parent who asked that stars and moons be displayed in schools in honor of Ramadan. She was denied and told that schools couldn't participate in religious celebrations. Fair enough. But she says, well, what about Christmas? And uh, Well, she said, uh, somebody said, you know, at issues whether Christian holidays such as Christmas should be celebrated, now Muslim children make up about 30% of district pupils. And... uh, she said, I want, I want everyone to be equally acknowledged. I never demanded no one can celebrate, uh, that no one can celebrate. I never said take Christmas away. Yeah. yeah so she's saying, well, you know, if you're going to celebrate Christmas, fine. And I, I don't have a problem with celebrating Christmas in the school. She's just saying, you know, what about Muslim holidays? As I see it, the Christmas that most schools celebrate has absolutely nothing to do with the birth of Jesus. It, it's a, as my the way I see it is in the United States and um, much of the Western world, we celebrate two different holidays at the end of December, both of which happen to be called Christmas, but have very little in common with each other. Hey, God, my brilliant! And a lot of people only celebrate one of them. <laughs> right. 
um, back in my last church, Steve uh, owned the comic book store behind me, and I'd walk up there and buy my comics with Steve all the time. Steve was an agnostic Jew, and he celebrated Christmas. He loved right. Christmas. He had the tree. He loved the. Pre- he'd buy me presents. He, he thought I was a great guy. Uh, yeah. You know, he, he had the tree. He, he'd have the presents. Uh, he'd tell me, oh, yeah, my brother's coming over Christmas Eve. You know, we're going to have a dinner together. You're going to have dinner, Christmas dinner and stuff. I mean, I, he had, I mean, for him, it was a purely secular event. Right. Had no religious. Like some people get real upset when they, you know, people want to call it, you know, winter festival or, you know, whatever, and not call Christmas. It really, or, or was Seattle had to call it the sparkle season. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think that's goofy. Yeah. But for them, it is the sparkle season. I mean, it yeah, is in, in a way, you're just being honest about what you're really celebrating. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, you know, Boston last year, for the first time, didn't have a Christmas tree. They had a holiday tree. I never knew the Jews put up trees for Christmas, but uh, <laughs> trees for, for Hanukkah. You know, I never knew that was part of yeah. the tradition. You know, what, what, what holiday does put up trees? But again, for the, that's just what it is. It's just a holiday. It's only a secular aspect to that. Uh, it also says something about Halloween. I never knew Halloween was a Christian holiday. <laughs> I was wondering about that, too. <laughs> you know. Isn't that kind of a pagan holiday? I mean, the name is Christian. Right. Because the name refers to, it's the night before All Hallows' Eve, before, um, or it's, it's, I mean, it's All Hallows' Eve. It's, it's the night before All Saints' Day. Right. But the way it's celebrated has absolutely nothing to do with that. Pumpkins and black cats and witches and lions and tigers, oh no, lions and tigers, oh my. You know, I mean, that's, 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 that's... Concentrate, Pinky, concentrate. Yeah, and go figure. It has nothing to do with, with any way being thought. Now, having said that, would I have a problem with putting up stars and a crescent moon? during Ramadan in the public school. No, I wouldn't. I really would have no problem. I mean, you know, again, I'm from this very multicultural area up here. My kids, as I've said before, um, first year they were in Randolph High, cut off for Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. Which is the only part I didn't like that. They had to go two more days into the, the, the summer. But, I mean... You know, so they, I, I, I don't have a problem with doing some sort of public acknowledgement that you know this is an important part time of year to Jews, or this is an important time of year to Muslims, or this is an important time of year to Christians, or this is an important time of year to uh, the Chinese for the Chinese New Year, or this is an important time of year. Yeah, you can acknowledge those religious celebrations in some educational ways. So the question that a lot of people use here, though, is where do you draw the line? I mean, there's you know hundreds of religions. How many of them are you going to acknowledge? You know, if you got an Asatru guy, are you going to build a fire pit? <laughs> <coughs> I mean, that's actually Asatru. You know, there's all kinds of Thor's hammer or something right. like that. You know. Wow. Well, so which? I think that's a legitimate question. That? I think here, though. You can deal with it. what is what has a healthy representation within our student body. You know, and healthy can be more than more than ten percent. I mean, if you have ten percent of some of, of them, less than ten percent, uh, yeah, so you have less than ten percent that's Wiccan, and in, 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 you know, you, you don't worry about it. Um, but if you have uh, yeah, but this is this is one third of the student body is Muslim. I mean that that's a pretty healthy percentage. Yeah, one out of three. Uh, that yeah, maybe they'd like to have some. Maybe it wouldn't be such a bad idea to give them some kind of acknowledgement that this is an important time of year to you. Um, you know, that's why. By the way, we we they they they, they do um, the Jewish holidays in my community because. Uh, at least one third. Eh, I don't know if it's as high as one third, but a good percentage. I would say probably fifteen, twenty percent of the kids would be out of school in those days. 
Well, why in the world try to teach school with 15, 20% of your, your population gone? Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I would hate to marginalize the minority where, you know, if you do have kids that are, um, you know, part of a, a religion that's much smaller, I don't want them to feel like your religion's not important or something like that. The way I look at it is more of, um, you know, and we talked about this was the last episode, I think we talked about how, um, or maybe a couple ago, with that in a lot of places, it's not so much the religion, it's the culture. <laughs> and a lot of the cultural elements came out of the religion. But, you know, there's no Wiccan culture. Right. You know, it's not associated with a certain ethnic group or anything like that. So, you know, it's, it's sort of like, you know, there's a lot of things that came out of Christianity, um, like Christmas, for instance. Um, you know, Easter, for that matter. You know, bunnies. Bunnies are a, a fertility symbol and actually have more to do with Easter, the actual word Easter, which is a reference to a uh, fertility goddess. Um, you know, that's why, uh, for instance, Eastern Orthodox uh, don't call it Easter, they call it Resurrection. So, you know, it's, it's I guess that's the, the question that we need to ask is, is this a cultural uh, representation or is this a religious representation? And in the schools, it makes sense to me to focus on the, the cultural at that point. Um, it seems like a good place to draw the line anyway. But somebody else probably has a better idea. Well, I, and I think part of the problem, though, comes to a couple things. I really think part of the problem comes to that overlap of the secular Christmas versus the religious Christmas. Mm-hmm. I think that's what causes some heartburn. Um, because um, well, one guy says something about you know Christian holidays are omnipresent in our society, and I know a lot of people who celebrate Christmas and who celebrate get stuck in the Easter Bunny, but really have no. It's a it's a cultural thing. It's 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 a it's a holiday. It's it's like Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving has you know really no no technical religious. Well, if you doubt. Cowboys fans, I guess it does have very religious meaning for you, but uh, you know, but it really, you know, I mean, it's it's just kind of this 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 day of Thanksgiving, and you can thank God, thank whoever you want, or whatever you want. Yeah, but anyway, just sort of generically be thankful. Yeah, which they generally mean like just to be happy. Right. I mean, one guy says, you know, I hope everyone fights for education as hard as we're fighting for Halloween and Santa. Well, you know, there's there once again, there's that 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 crossover. Of Santa has nothing to do. Really, with the celebration of Christ's birth, right. yeah, that the, the, they're they're two they're two different things, and mm-hmm. that's that's what I think we we, we, we kind of have to to work through and, and struggle with is uh, that and, and come to an acknowledgement that there is a, a secular side of Christmas. Um, now there is the sparkle season. That most yeah. people participate in, but really has nothing to do with the religious celebration of Christ's birth. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Yeah. But I'm sure we'll talk more about this, you know, in a, about a month or a month and a half. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I guess that's, you know, coming out here to the very, you know, multicultural area that I live in. And I mean, you, you, my neighborhood, I mean, you know, the guy next door to me is Jamaican. The people across the street are Asian. Um, people on the other side of me are African-American. A uh, guy across from me, one, one door over is Jewish. I mean, that, that, that that's just my immediate neighbors. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I've kind of gotten used to this idea that, yeah, you really do got to, you know, be open to a variety of different uh, they, you know, express uh, uh, religions and people and expressions, and you know, and that really does need to come through in the school system in a very positive way. Sure. Do I do do Fantastic. I think they're all the same? No, I I believe 
You know, I, I believe uh, uh, Jesus is the only way to heaven, no question. Mm -hmm. But we're not talking about a faith thing. We're talking about what do we have to do in the social structure in order to all get along. Oh, very nice, Blaine! Yeah, yeah, so even if you're not Roman Catholic, you can still celebrate St. Patrick's Day. That's right. And for that matter, you know, you'll get St. Valentine's Day. Most people don't even know that there really was that Valentine is that it's St. Valentine's Day and refers to an actual Christian martyr. Uh, they just they, it's just like some word that refers to hearts and hate or something, you know. Right. And uh, yeah, the same thing. Like you're right. The same thing with uh, St. Patrick's Day. People far far they know it's uh, just a day when uh, you eat corned beef and cabbage, and everybody's a little bit Irish. Which can be, and drink green beer. And drink green beer, which, when you consider everything, is really odd. And, um, considering up here, of course, there's the famous sign saying, need, no Irish need apply. Hmm. Of course, the ones who really like it up here are the Irish mobs. But we, we won't go into that. <laughs> no. No. But we would love to hear from our listeners and, and viewers. And... Uh, and tell us what you think about this. I, I think this whole question of um, of where do you draw that line, uh, I think it's a difficult question, and I would love to hear from other people on this. The, mm -hmm. What do you think? Where do you draw that line? Do you you know consider these uh, secular events? Do you um, you know how do you how do you see that? And, and I think, so, I, I, and I'd be interested in hearing myself from people from a variety of parts of the country. Yeah, you I know. Will. Places maybe a little bit uh, homogenous versus places that are more diverse, and see if sure. there's any differences there. So, so there's one we 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 would like a lot of comments on. Yeah, yeah. So just you know, it doesn't have to be anything long. We don't need you know essays or anything like that. But we would just love to hear from you. So tell us mm -hmm. what you think. And and by the way, if you're um, this is something I want to remind people of, just because these episodes are out there. And you might not, you know, you might come across this long time after it's it's out there. Don't feel like because it's an old episode that you can't reply to us. Mm -hmm. um, we still would love to hear from you, even if it's an old episode. If you have some thoughts on something, you have some feelings about something, let us know. Hey, us and if you have a religious tattoo that's in a okay place to show, um, take a picture of it, email it to us. And yeah. uh, well, we get our next episode. We'll do a montage of of tattoos, that, Christian tattoos that people have. That would be cool. That would be great. So, so yeah, I mean, you know, only appropriate stuff. You send us something inappropriate, we don't even want to see it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Got that right. So you can um, you can contact us at podcast at crossfeednews dot com, yeah. or, or you can click on the screen right now, and that'll take you to our yeah, feedback or, page. Anytime during the episode, actually, mm -hmm. any from the most recent episodes, generally you can just click right on the screen any, at any point during the episode. So remember that for next time, too. Um, but, yeah, you can call our voicemail line at 206-350-4749. And, uh, and, and let us know what you think. Or if you want to, you know, if you want to email, say you live outside the country, um, or you don't want to use your long-distance minutes or, you know, or, or whatever. Um, feel free if you have a, you can actually go to our site and there's a little box you can click on to record a message there. Um, or if you want to just use your computer to record a message and send us, email us an MP3 file of you talking or something like that. I mean, get a hold of us however you want. We'd love to hear from you. And then, you know, if, if the other thing is if you want to get a hold of us, but you don't want it on the show and you're worried that you know, that we're going to read your message on the show and it's some kind of personal or whatever, that's fine. We'd still love to hear from you. And just let us know that you don't want it um, discussed or, or read or played or whatever on the show. And we'll respect that. Mm -hmm. um, so. Just to let you know, we will not be having an episode next week. Um, yep. We've got other things, both of us, that, that need to be taken care of at this time. And uh, so sorry for those of you who downloaded every week and look forward to it. But, uh, you know, that's, that's just kind of where next week is for both of us. And so we won't be able to take, uh, do that. But, uh, we will be back then in two weeks. Yep. 
And we also want to thank our sponsor, PDAPerformance.com. Uh, they provide our hosting and bandwidth, and we really appreciate that. So um, go check them out. And we really appreciate all of you for, for listening and, and, and joining us in our comments and our laughter and everything else. Yep. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you. God bless your week. Good night, everybody. God bless. Finished, Pinky.